you know, when we first started a few years ago, my role was just purely in the bakery all the time and just learning how to bake. Uh, I'm almost embarrassed to walk in through here. We, this is still our construction yard. So two months ago, what was back here was just a pile of construction waste as we built this, this addition. And, and I say we, uh, I designed it and drew it out. Uh, I bought the stuff for it. Um, and in that way, our community, you know, helped build, build us this um, through proofs, uh, sales over the winter. But my dad did all the construction. So uh, my, um, my parents immigrated to this country when they were um, in their late 20s. Um, and they ended up living in Chicago where I ended up uh, growing up. Uh, my dad worked in this type of trade work, so he did construction, he uh, fixed everything. Uh, you know, it was definitely a do-it-yourselfer. My mom, uh, huge gardener. Uh, they still have this beautiful uh, landscape in Poland that they've built from scratch. Um, I've been itching to grow food for so many years, and uh, there really wasn't the right time. Uh, prior to proof, the idea of having a garden was nice, but there was no use for that garden. So it, I would have immediately outgrown what I could consume myself. Uh, and now we have this really amazing use. So we're getting after the garden as the construction project is winding down. In no way is this a orderly space yet. This is kind of the beginning of the next stage for the bakery. Um, we've worked a lot inside the confines of the building. Uh, we've learned a lot there, but I think the next phase for us is to grow food that then ends up in the bakery uh, as part of a production. So uh, let me introduce you to our version one tomato garden. So we're just moving this, uh, this drip irrigation to the next plant. I have been told by people who are better at gardening than me uh, that if I water slowly um, and let the roots grab this throughout a longer period of time, uh, a lot more energy will go into root production. Uh, and that's all I'm really looking for right now. We're picking off flowers uh, that are already coming onto these young tomato plants. These are starts actually that came from a local farm here, at Agritopia Farm. There's another reality to having a bakery around your house, and that's you have to figure out how to be a good neighbor. Uh, we're actively moving parts of our bakery off-site this year. We're, we're looking at spaces right now for packaging and distribution because that takes up a lot of people. Uh, it takes a lot of people to package hundreds of orders, and so we're trying to move that off-site and leave this space just for baking uh, and let it be a home. Uh, the, the space we're in right now, I moved water here. Uh, this is, these are ficus trees. They're gonna grow into these giant walls. And really part of this is to create privacy for the bakery and privacy for this little baker's lot. We're not trying to be an imposition on the neighborhood. We have to ride this fine balance of being able to do all this amazing production, but recognize that this is a home. We're not trying to fill the street with cars. So what we're trying to do is kind of reach a balance where we can have just a few people here on this production site at a time, um, tucked in a garage, baking bread, and then we'll bring that bread off site, package it, and bring it out to the world. Um, we're looking at an old citrus grove right now, but you know, somebody owns that property right now. I'm looking at this garage that I want to turn into uh, kind of the next phase for proof. I moved the water to the next tree. We're watering each of those trees. And uh, today we're planting a mulberry tree. So it just so happens we're also in mulberry season right now. This week we're our special. Uh, is from the mulberry fruit. Uh, mulberries are this Asian berry. Grow on these giant trees. 
So this is a small tree, but right now, but it'll grow into this big hundred footer if you let it. Uh, mulberries are the only thing that the silkworm eats. And so actually without mulberries, you wouldn't have silk. Just so happens that they are something that grows really well in Arizona. And for whatever reason, a lot of people don't even know what a mulberry is. I could go on a whole rant on this subject, and I guess I will since I'm just digging a hole anyway. Uh, but if you go into any of our local grocery stores right now, I would think you should find mulberries. Will you find any mulberries in the local grocery stores right now? No. Uh, part of the problem is they age pretty quickly and mold really quick. Uh, so they're really meant to be eaten right away or preserved. Well, our grocery stores aren't in the business of preserving food. Instead, they're more in the business of throwing it away often. Uh, so there's just no way that a mulberry can make it from the tree to the grocery store to the person in time before it spoils or becomes jam. Yet this tree, this one tree, will give hundreds of pounds of fruit every year. They're, they're abundant, they grow super fast. We're putting this one in the front. We have another one that we're gonna put in the back. And this tree will have a secondary purpose of kind of screening the house in as people turn the corner on the street. Uh, yeah, our intention is to really, again, not be an imposition. We're trying to do our thing in our little corner of the universe and trying to leave everybody else alone. This yard has flood irrigation. We're really lucky, but we're gonna have to do some work to get the, the flood irrigation. So this particular spot will eventually be flood irrigated. The thing is a previous owner decided to cement over the flood irrigation valve. So when we got here, it was just, we didn't even know we had it. Uh, we actually rented this house and then we bought a bakery. We moved a bakery into its garage and we had this oh crap moment where we better figure out how to make this place our own. Uh, while, this, while this water's kind of soaking in here, uh, I'm gonna put the water on my orange tree that we're reviving. Several years of neglect by us you know, I'm, I'm talking a big game gardening right now. I could show you my new pomegranate tree. I could show you my loquat, but in, in reality, you know, we're just learning and also learning to respect the earth around us. Uh, these trees have been neglected during the whole time that we've been building the bakery. And it's um, really time to try to turn that around. Uh, if you saw this tree a few days ago, you would have noticed that the leaves were looking even worse than they are right now. They're actually starting to open back up. This tree has gained more green uh, into it in the last few days. I think it would have it would have died this summer had I not started gardening. Um, we've actually been losing one of these big citrus trees per year every year since we bought the bakery. And in that way, it's sort of been the, the yang to the yin of the bakery. It's been a constant reminder that our life is not in balance because we can't take care of some of the things around us that we already have. Um, so really the bakery has been uh, this giant learning lesson of trying to seek balance. Uh, we had to sort of rework everything in the first year uh, of that business to make it work. Um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't profitable. Um, the relationships weren't very good. Um, the, the workload was ridiculous. Uh, there was no time to sleep, no time for balance. 
So we really sought to rework the bakery into something that provided balance, but we didn't have the balance in our own personal lives at the time. The, the house was sort of falling apart. Um, then we started to invest in the bakery and, and give it what it needed um, as the bakery sort of healed into a viable, uh, you know, young business. Uh, the rest of the property has started to heal too. Um, so we're now after some of the things that we care about that we want to incorporate into baking. Uh, we really want the people who buy our bread to be more exposed to what's seasonal and what's good and what's local. Uh, and we'd like to bring some of that to them. So we have a third of an acre here and we hope to use that third of an acre to grow food to the extent that we can. So the future is actually outside. Uh, we're standing in what I hope to be a little front yard fruit forest in the future. And I hope that through this, our customers will learn more about the seasons. So hopefully every May comes around and people will be looking forward to the mulberry uh, pastries that they might be buying. Uh, hopefully after mulberry, people will know to expect peaches. They'll know to expect figs. People know that if they're lucky, they can get some Arizona apples in June. We're still trying to figure out what to do with this prickly pear cactus. In August, it's going to have an abundance of fruit on it. And uh, we have some friends that are local uh, chefs. Uh, one in particular, she knows a lot about cactuses and their use. And I'm hoping, hoping we can get her help or someone else's in figuring out how to deal with cactus. One of the things I've been learning recently is, is that you can plant trees year round in Arizona, even in the depth of summer. It's just a matter of providing the tree what it needs once it goes into the earth. I've been spending, I wake up at 4.30 in the morning every day. I run into the bakery, turn on the oven, turn on uh, the proofer, get some product into the proofer, start the first auto lease for the day and then I jump outside. This last one is going to be a little bit By 11 o'clock I'm not going to want to be outside anymore. It's going to be that time of year. So it's either early in the morning or never. Uh, so I've been trying to take advantage while we can. We can't plant the tree quite yet. Uh, before we plant the tree we've got to prepare the, the soil that's gonna go back in. So I reserved a little bit of garden soil, basically whatever was, was there uh, already. I might take some of those rocks out and I might add a little bit more, uh, but we're gonna add uh, this really interesting uh, local fertilizer. This is a guy, Tony, uh, that is a master gardener in Tucson and he makes he grows a lot of fruit trees, but makes this uh, homemade fertilizer that he brings up to Phoenix like on a monthly basis. We learned about him when we posted a garden update uh, on social media and a bunch of people said, hey, reach out to this guy. Well, he actually came here and walked the garden with me and gave me a bunch of tips. So some of the stuff I'm talking about really is coming from people that actually do know what they're talking about. So this is not my realm. I hope it one day feels like it is and I, I hope I can learn. I, I hope I can be half the gardener my mom is one day. I'm proud of some of the things that have been happening recently. These are a bunch of weeds that I took out of the ground this past week. It's fun to put a tree in the ground and it's kind of fun to water it. Uh, it's fun to have your morning coffee and move water, uh, water around to the next tree. Uh, what's a little less fun is sitting there and pulling weeds. But as you're waiting for the, the watering to happen, you notice the weeds that are right there in the ground. 
And if you spend enough time outside near the weeds, you just start pulling weeds in those spare moments. That's how I've approached it. I've gotten a lot in the last week. Uh, this was all from like that crazy rain that we had here in Arizona, January, February this year, just huge amounts of rain right when we were putting the roof on, on the addition. Um, anyway, this is a low quat tree I put in recently. This will bear uh, an incredible fruit. It'll be a huge tree here. Uh, it's just north of this prickly pear cactus. I planted some goji berries back here behind the, the low quat. So timer is telling me that I need to move on. I'm ruled by these timers now. We're going to shut the water off. It's going to take a little while for that hole to absorb the water. We'll get back to planting the tree a little while later. Just moving to the next plant. I also noticed that this tomato has some flowers. So from each of these flowers will come an actual tomato. What's crazy is these things were tiny just a few weeks ago. That Tony's fertilizer, I'm telling you, some sort of magic dust. We have a worm bin going where we're gonna start making our own fertilizer here, but in the meantime, I'm happy somebody's providing this organic fertilizer. Uh, I'm gonna pick off all these flowers. I don't want this tomato to produce tomatoes yet. I actually want this tomato to produce more roots so that it gets stronger. Uh, stronger roots uh, mean more nutrients pulling from the earth for better tomatoes later on. So we're sort of trading these early, not so hot tomatoes with a couple week old plant and um, in oh. favor of better tomatoes later on. Zara, will you calm down? It is okay. The guy who brought me the magic fertilizer I was referencing earlier, Tony, he came over and he saw this lime tree and he saw that the, the leaves were cupping and he said, give it more water. And so he gave me this entire lesson on watering. These trees, when they came in two days ago, clearly had not seen water in a while. The leaves were all like starting to wrinkle actually. So I gave it enough water over the last couple days in this pot and it's opened back up. These leaves feel decent. This is a mulberry. Um, it's a young mulberry and these guys apparently, if well taken care of, put on like 10 to 12 feet a year. So we're gonna probably chop this one back uh, and keep it in check so that we can actually get to the fruit. If we let it get too tall, the fruit will really be better for the birds uh, than for us. The point of this step, uh, again, I'm not a master gardener, I'm just a student of this, uh, but the point of this step is to introduce uh, enough native earth to where the plant is acclimating to what, what's available but also to provide nutrition. So the assumption going in is, is that this earth doesn't have as much nutrition built up into it. So I'm adding this black soil, which is rich in nutrients. It's younger soil. And then this is this magic fertilizer. I'm going to add eight cups of it to this initial tree. It's a lot. Uh, it's, I think more than I've put on anything else so far, but this is that initial soil blend that provides the nutrients for this plant to get established. Especially trying to cover up that initial fertilizer right away so I don't lose it to, to the air. Definitely need to break up some of the bigger chunks of native earth that was here. And in doing so, we're providing kind of loose soil that the plant can thrive in. I know some people actually add minerals at this stage, like azomite as a soil amendment. One thing that I've been learning about plants lately is really they are just like pets. They don't just take water, they have to be fed. And so that's what I'm learning about all this fertilizer. I want to sort of take this knowledge and graduate to the point that I understand how to make fertilizer here. We have the start of a worm bin going right now. And those red wiggler worms that I put in there are creating vermicompost, which will fertilize, hopefully, trees all around 
the property. All right, so I've got a decent soil blend going now and I still got water in the hole. I'm gonna cover that layer of water. In the past, I haven't had a whole lot of success if I put, I did put the last mulberry tree that I planted a year ago. Granted, I was more of a novice then. I damaged the roots out of the, out of the pot. And then I remember putting it in a really wet hole. And I swear by the end of the day, that thing was dead. Uh, so, so far I've had better success lately enough that I'm willing to take a risk and do this in front of all of you. So hopefully the update to this mulberry tree later on is that it's thriving. Uh, and if not, I suppose it will just be another lesson in time. So I'm gonna grab this now, try to get it out of this pot. There it goes. If this falls apart on you, it seems to be enough to lose the whole project. So now I have to sort of look at how I want this tree to be placed. We want the top of the root ball here to be exposed. So I'm actually not gonna go covering this part. You want this part to actually breathe these young roots here to have the ability to take on nutrients really easily and accessibly. So I'm gonna leave that guy alone now and I'm gonna fill in all around it. This is definitely the nicest soil that we've made because of that amendment. So I just got this amendment not that long ago after the point that I planted most of the trees in the yard. So I was amending with a mycorrhiza before uh, that I just got on Amazon. Uh, and that seemed to work well, but I gotta say that this particular mixture seems to have all the plants just taking off. Uh, which is pleasing, especially with summer coming. The way I see it is I have a month to get these things strong and established before I risk losing them to the crazy summer heat. Just gonna mix a little bit more native soil in because I need more soil. I think one of the important aspects which hopefully holds true later on is soil's kind of loose going in and well aerated. I also need to go get some mulch for this new tree which I don't have any left on hand but I'm going to leave the root ball exposed and put a few inches of mulch all around it and in doing so I'm going to help the tree retain moisture when it's watered. Mulch also begins to decompose when combined with other organic green material. And so you're creating kind of a recipe for good soil. I swear that plants like seem to understand when their environment's not well suited for them and then they don't do well. I, I know that that sounds a little bit metaphysical almost and that that's uncomfortable but plants are definitely living beings and our uh, relationship with them is is that it's a back and forth relationship you have to be able to read what the plant needs next now i'm going to take this hose and i'm setting it up as just a slow drip uh, and i'm going to let this uh, hydrate much of the day today probably just right actually a little pressure is building up but it's a really slow drip. I'm not, I'm not trying to inundate this plant. What I'm trying to do is water it in such a way that the water will all absorb deep into the earth below and provide hydration to the roots. Really everything about this tree in its initial time here is building strength through its roots. So again, I'm going to be looking for wisdom from people that know more about mulberries, but if this thing starts to fruit, I'm gonna be asking the question, should I be pulling those fruits off in the first year? My goal is for this thing to produce a lot of fruit 
reliably in future years. So right now, the most important thing is to just get it established in the soil.